Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to Starbucks. I'm your host, Anthony DiNardo. With me, we have Jim Rosati. Jim, we are officially back from Bradenton. Spring training is well on its way. And happy Monday. Happy Monday. Sorry for the technical issues uh, this morning. I don't know what happened there. Well, good. I, think, I think it was just like, uh, I think my everything was in Florida mode still. So Yeah, yeah all our all setups had to be reestablished so it is what it is but other than that so um yeah it's it's good to be home i'll say that part um it's good to be home at the same time um it was like 45 degrees when i landed on friday so oh that kind of sucked but it's uh it's warming up a little bit it is now i think the high today is in the 70s so things are looking good It was a beautiful day yesterday. Good. I'm glad to hear. I mean, spring is basically here, so we should be enjoying some better weather. Yeah. Unless that groundhog is lying to us. (laughs) He wouldn't dare. I think when, I mean, when when was that? February 2nd? Yep. Groundhog Day. And, And he said four more weeks of winter. I think that's what he said this year was four more weeks. Oh, is means, that what he said? I mean, we're it's springtime. It's springtime, baby. Well, technically it's six more weeks. And but I'll take four. Yeah, I think he said it was gonna be a short, a short winter. If I so if he, I remember okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So he he verbalized it. He was like, you know what? Yeah. I know normally <laughs> we say six more weeks, but yeah, this time it's different. Yeah, it's different. He, he it's said, you time. know what, this year, this year only, only I I'm pretty sure that's what it was. I could be wrong, but I think I think we only have four more weeks this year. Well, that works because yeah, like you say, it's March fourth, so it's been it's been four weeks. So let's yeah. get this on the road here. <clears throat> let's get baseball season back, which it's basically is back now. So we've had a full week, like we mentioned, of spring training, which we were down there for. Um, the Pirates have have been playing some baseball. We're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about that, but. Um, I guess where do we want to start? We're going to talk obviously about Cabrian Hayes. We want to talk about Cabrian Hayes. You especially want to talk about Cabrian Hayes. Uh, there's been some injuries to the bullpen. This bullpen that we've been talking about, that's going to be a really good unit. Right, Dalmaretta left the game yesterday. And then with that, we kind of heard on top of that with David Bednar. He's dealing with some lat issues. Um, where, where do we want to start today? Um, I mean, I guess let's start with um, Moretta. That's kind of the 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 newest news, right? Right. Uh, ninth inning yesterday's game threw a pitch fastball was below 90 miles an hour. I think it clocked into 89.8, which was, you know, four or five miles an hour below his average. Um, yeah, he, uh, and, and then, you know, arm kind of dangling there. You could see he didn't really look too good uh, after the game. Um, you know, Derek Shelton said it was his elbow. Right. So that's never necessarily a good thing. Uh, Elbow injuries aren't what you want to see out of your pitchers. So he was taken out of the game. Um, We'll learn more probably today or tomorrow as far as what's going on with him. But yeah, uh, Dowry Moretta, not not great news there. Uh, He wasn't looking very good this spring. So you wonder if there was just kind of something something off there, you know, the whole time. And he was trying to pitch through it. But, um, yeah, not a great spring so far for Moretta. And he now potentially, you know, going to miss the start of the year. Potentially. We don't know. I mean, I don't – I'm not speculating it's like a a UCL or anything like that. But um, elbow injury on March 4th. If he's got to be shut down for a while, he's likely not not going to be ready by opening day. Would be my guess. Yeah, I feel like this is one of those things where I mean, just like you're saying, he hasn't looked good so far this spring. But it's spring training, you know. Like this is where stats don't really matter, right? We talk about it time and time again. But you would prefer the person look better than not look good, right? Uh, and Dowry just hasn't looked good. You know, he gave up this few home runs the first time out. Um, gave up. You give a home run last last night as well. Yeah, I can't remember. It was okay. Yep. Before I said he did, I want to make sure I did. 
So he did yesterday as well, right? But then, the, yeah, right, like he he left and the velocity was down and his last pitch was 89 miles an hour. Um, and you saw it. I mean, as soon as he released that pitch, it went right to the arm. So it's one of those things, like you're saying, was he maybe just injured? I mean, that makes you feel a little bit better about like the results that you've been seeing. Was he kind of injured and pitching through this whole time? But in the same sense, like, oh, has he been injured this whole time? Because that's not good. Uh, so, yeah, there's, there's just a lot of unknowns right now. Uh, we just know that he's injured. It's an elbow injury, which, like you said, usually isn't too good. If we want to go on the speculation trade train here, um, I, I don't want to say he's like this huge piece in the bullpen. Like It's not David Bednar. It's not Chapman, Holderman. Like, those are the dogs that you want to make sure they're healthy right now and such. But Dowry, yeah. like the Dowries and the Majinskis, and we talk about the Bruckies, are, are big parts in the sense that if this team is going to be good, it's because they're shortening the game, right? This rotation isn't as desirable. It's probably not going to be a ton of innings there, quality innings. So you want to see this bullpen make up for that. And that's where Moretta falls in. Like he's the guy that's going to be coming in probably the fifth, sixth inning, making sure that is that team shut down still to carry it over to Holderman and Bednar and Chapman and such, right? So, um, I mean, it's still big news. You know, this is a really good unit because of the quality and the depth that's there. And if Darwin Redder is lost, there's a potential that, you know, that takes a big hit there. Um, so at this point in time, again, like we don't really know what's going to transpire with him. But, you know, you want to stay hopeful that maybe it is the beginning, you know, the few first weeks that he misses. But, yeah, Jim, I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess you're right. Like, as far as from a depth standpoint goes, like, Moretta, Moretta's probably, like, the number six guy in this bullpen. If I'm just kind of looking at it, five or six guy would be my guess. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's a hit. Like, this is a guy who you were counting on to give you some major league innings, and if he can't go by opening day, then you've got to bring someone else on. Like, you know, probably this opens the door for those non-roster guys. Uh, yeah. If anything, Brent Honeywell... Um, being being probably, you know, a very a very likely choice. Ben Heller, um, I, I would say like those two. If you're looking at non roster guys, Ben Heller and um, and Brent Honeywell probably have the best shot of making this team. Um, Chase Anderson maybe too because he didn't look too bad. Willie Peralta, another one who hasn't looked terrible in his little bit of time. So there's there are guys there who can be slotted in and, and like you can live with you can live with uh Brent Honeywell being like your eighth guy in the bullpen, right? But what it does is it kind of you know puts everyone up a up a tick. So yeah, I mean it's definitely something to monitor. Um it's a it's a huge bummer. Dabry Moretta. Um I, I I like him and he he came up big for a few a few times last year was pretty consistent too. just an overall, you know, a pretty decent performer throughout the entire season. So yeah, you're counting on him for, for something this year. Again, he could be fine. Like this could just be like a one time. Oh, my elbow got a little sore and by next week he's fine. Right. Um, we'll, like I said, we'll find out more later on, but yeah, definitely not good news. We were getting through spring relatively healthy up to this point. Uh, and Moretta's the first guy to really, really go down with any sort of injury um you mentioned some other guys there have been a few players who haven't gotten in a game yet right because of because of issues but i don't really have too many concerns with that like you talked about bednar they came out yesterday and said that bednar is dealing with some sort of lat issue david bednar doesn't need a whole lot of time to get ready for the major league season like if david bednar can pitch by next week or the week after and just get like three or four innings in, then I feel pretty confident that he, that he'll be fine. So, you know, that's a little bit different of a scenario. McCutcheon hasn't gotten in a game kind of same thing with him, right? Like you're not, you right. don't need to get Andrew McCutcheon a hundred at bats in spring training. Um, Palacios, the one guy where, you know, he probably needs to get some swings in because he's competing for a roster spot. Um, he, he being the other one who still has yet to get into a game. But uh, but yeah, the Moretta news definitely hurts. Um, but they do have quite a few arms there where someone someone should be able to step up. You know, out of all of these guys that they've invited to camp, find one. You know, can, find one of them who can be a competent major leaguer. And the odds of that yeah. happening are pretty high, to be honest. Like, I mean, you you take you take eight guys with major league experience. 
you know, hopefully one of them looks good. Right. I'm with you. Again, like the David Bednar news, I'm not going to say worrisome because I, I'm not worried about the news. I'm not worried about that injury, the way it's coming off. It just seems like, I mean, it, it is spring. It's spring training. You are not going to risk anyone getting injured. If you are a pitcher and you're having any time of, any type of discomfort like you just you just chill there the fact that he was scheduled to pitch one day and like they decided no i just feel like if the injury was even that bad he's not scheduled to pitch right it's just like you right. know what it's it's I, I woke up today and still just not feeling right all right you know what? we're just gonna be take a week right we'll be extra cautious you are david bednar we know you're the closer we know you're gonna be good that's how I look at this, right? So I'm not worried about David Bednar, I guess, in that aspect of like, oh, how how bad is his injury? I think he's probably fine. Uh, I would rather not hear that he's injured, but this is why he hasn't shown up to a game. Like now we kind of actually do know. Um, but like with the Moretta news, like you're talking about, that's not good seeing how he left. But like you said, the positive on that is the fact that this isn't the guy that you're really relying on. And again, that's like what adding Chapman does with his bullpen. It makes it super deep and, and pretty competitive. So, you know, like, you don't really need Dowry to be there all year to think, you know, this this bullpen has to be good with him and such. Like it's it still can be productive. Like you talk about like Willie Prada to one is kind of stands out to me. Um, I mean, they did just sign Josh Fleming, you know, recently. Like, like there's a lot of opportunities here. Um, like your boy Stratton, too. You you love Stratton. This is your breakout guy. Maybe this gives him an opportunity as well. I think it'll probably go with like an NRI guy that you're talking about, though, obviously also, but yeah. Um, I'm not, this is again, like, this isn't something you worry too much. There's a lot of opportunities here. There's going to be almost a full more month left of baseball for them to, to fight for this position if it's needed. And yeah, like may the best guy win. I mean, again, we're talking about a guy who last year was a nobody, right? I mean, this was about a guy that the Reds are basically DFAing, but they, they traded for Kevin Newman and it's like, you know, he, he's a terrible pitcher. And now we're talking about him being injured. Like, oh, what are they going to do, right? So, like, you can you can usually fill bullpen with some arms. Um, so, yeah, again, like this isn't one of the guys you're truly relying on. Um, so that's like the more positive news. And again, we don't really know what's going to happen, but it, it didn't look good. I will say that. No, I mean, anytime, anytime a pitcher grimaces after a throw, and then you hear it's their elbow, <laughs> it's not great. Yeah. No. So. Best of uh, let's say it, best wishes to him. Hopefully he's hopefully he's all right. Um, and hopefully it's just like a a short a short thing. But yeah, he hasn't looked very good in his limited outing so far this year. But this was the first time that we saw the velocity like super down. I just went back and looked uh, when he pitched on Wednesday. You know he was you know, he was sitting ninety four, ninety four and a half somewhere in that area. Hit ninety five, which right. is you know where you'd expect him to be. Um, but yeah, la uh, last yesterday. Uh, he was below 90, low 90s the whole time. There was clearly something wrong. Uh, agree. All right. <clears throat> so there's the uh, the injury report, I guess, uh, up to up to date so far. Um, and then I guess, like you said, like, well, Plaza is like the other one. We won't go too deep into him. I'm not sure what's going on. But, yeah, he's obviously injured, and that's why he hasn't shown up for uh, for any games yet. So do we want to talk about Brian Hayes next? Yeah, let's do it. Let's get this. I want to talk about Brian news. Hayes. I want to talk about Brian Hayes. The Brian is having a really good start again, Jim. Like a really good start. Yeah, and it's it's one of those things where, like, again, he's always played really well um, in spring training. He has a career spring training OPS of one thousand and eighty four. So I want I want like everybody to realize like. This is just like what he does when he's down here for some reason. I don't know what it is. Like he's just really comfortable um, in spring training, but he's just looked so good this first, you know, th these first eight, nine days of spring. Um, obviously the fielding, like we know how good of a fielder he is, like, and that hasn't missed a beat, but offensively, he just, He's doing everything you want to you want to see him do, right? He's he's having good at bats. Um, he hasn't struck out yet, so I mean, fourteen at bats so far, no strikeouts. He's putting the ball in play. He's putting it in play hard, like he's hitting the ball and he it's it's he's blistering it. 
Um, he's lifting the ball. He's hit two home runs already. He's driving and runs. Man, like, he's just, he he looks really, really, really good. Um, and, and, you know, you titled this, you know, breakout season. I'm, I mean, I need to see a little bit more. Like, I actually need to see it in the regular season. But, like, right now, my expectations of Cabrian Hayes are the highest they've ever been. Like, I think this dude legitimately has figured it out. I think he's figured it out finally, right? And all these years we've waited for him to figure it out. I think he's finally done it. You look at how he finished last year. You look at how he looks right now. He just looks like a different baseball player than what he than what he looked like in 2022 or 2021 or even the beginning of last year. Um, like I said, a lot of pulling the ball, a lot of hitting the ball hard, a lot of hitting it in the air. I am excited for this season to see Q Brian Hayes. Like I put it out there, like this dude could get MVP votes this year if you know if if he if he's able to do this over the course of a season. Um, yeah, like I'm. I think this is the year like he puts it all together. I'm very hopeful that this is the year. Things seem to be lining up that it could be. Um, you know, I said on NS9 Live that, yeah, like to me, March doesn't matter. You show the career stats in spring. What he's doing right now isn't why I'm going to be intrigued, isn't why I'm hopeful, isn't why I'm excited about Cabrian Hayes. But I am going to pump the brakes. Like, again, I, I need to see it in April to then say this is why it is a breakout season, this is why to hype it and believe it. All I can tell you now is things that make me feel like it is different, like like you, I think what you're alluding to, uh, this time. like We're not going to be tricked this time. It is different. Believe me. Trust me on this one, right? And, and I guess the reason is a lot of it deals with last year. Uh, a lot of it deals with the fact that, of course, he did it for two months at the end of the season, right? That's what we talked about. Like, like he's, he's done it. We've seen it, so maybe he can carry over. But I think what's most important is – it's not so much like the performance. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit about the, like the mental aspect of it. Yep. I was gonna I was bring, bring that up too. Yep. It it seems like okay. Um, I think Fort talked about someone else, but it's like people need to start taking like their careers in their own hands, right? And you know, the coaching is one thing, but until a player says, like, I'm gonna take this into my own hands, I'm gonna find out who I am and do that, that's usually when things like start to click and such, right? And I feel like Cabrian's done that, you know, like last year. And just with talking, and, uh, I mean, we still don't know the exact story between Nunnally and everything, right? But it just seems as if Brian Cabrian Hayes got to a point where he said, I'm tired of this shit. I want to be a good player. And I'm going to be a good player. And he did whatever he needed to do to, like, achieve that. And we saw, like, those final few months of what he was, right? That to me is like, I feel like what the most important is. And we talk about also like with more or less with rookies, right? Like you want to see players struggle because it's through the struggles that they usually learn, develop, become a better person. They come up and they're just good. They, they don't find out like what they're not good at. They don't learn to adapt. They don't learn baseball, right? They're just the talents taken or whatever. And Brian Hayes has struggled a long time. <laughs> and, and again, like maybe it just took that long time to him to say like, I'm tired of this. But like on the other aspect, and this is like I'm not psychoanalyzing everything, but on the other aspect, like he is a very typically quiet person. We've seen him be more vocal. And I don't know if this is all a combination of everything as well, but like we've seen him be much more vocal about things. Um, and he's even talked about like on the broadcast, like this, like I'm now one of the older players. I'm now a guy that they go come to and talk to. So, like, I don't know if this whole leadership thing is clicking. I don't know if it's, like, I need to be a better person. I need to be a better player. And, like, it's all clicking, happening. And But, like, that's the thing that kind of stands out to me. That's what's different. That's what I can actually see it's different. The spring training numbers are the same as they've pretty much been all his career. But it seems to be what's different is him, Cabrian. He seems to be different. Um, so that's kind of where that, I, I think that's why I feel more confident what these numbers are and how it could translate. I think he wants to be a better player and damn it. He's going to be. Yeah. I, um, I, I, I went into originally there just how he's looked right. But you hit, you also hit the nail on the head there. He just seems like a different person, like in general, like he's, he's changed his, he's changed his demeanor. 
Um, he's confident. Like you can tell, you can tell he is riding high with confidence right now. And I mean, he should be right. Like he, he, he just won a gold glove. He just won his first career gold glove. He, he ended last season, just tearing the cover off the ball. Like he legitimately played MVP caliber baseball for the last two months of the season last year. Right. Um, so he should be confident. And that's a big, big difference. I feel like between now, because he's like exuding that confidence. He's, he's saying, Hey, you know what? Like I, I'm here. I deserve to be here. I'm a good baseball player. Like you mentioned, um, there was something that stuck out to me last week. MLB network was in Bradenton and Cliff Lloyd interviewed Brian Hayes for, you know, a, like a five minute segment. First off, have we ever heard Brian Hayes talk for five minutes in his right. entire career? I don't know, but like the dude like never opens his mouth, but that's another thing you're seeing this some this, this spring is like, he's, he's talking a lot more. He's, he's on camera. He's being more vocal. He's, he's being like that leader. Um, but I think it just comes back to the confidence. Like, I think he's just riding high with confidence right now. But one thing that stuck out to me in that interview with Cliff Floyd, and if you, if you haven't watched it, go on like the MLB TV app uh, it, or MLB, whatever. Um, but if you go on there, you can see like the, the pirates spring training thing. It's like 21 minutes long. It's a, it's a good watch. Uh, you should, you should go watch it. Um, but in there, Cliff Floyd asks him, you know, you, you know, you're coming off a gold glove this year. Do you have any goals for this season? Um, and Hayes said that, you know, he's actually never set goals for himself, like going into a year. He kind of just like went into it and, and just tried to do his best. Right. Um, but Hayes mentioned on that interview, he said, he's like, I do have some goals this year. He's like, I'm not going to tell you what they are, but I've got some goals this year. And I was like, Ooh, that means he's got some high goals this year. Like he, he, he believes in himself. So I think we're, like I said, we're seeing a, a more confident Cabrian Hayes. We're seeing a Cabrian Hayes who just like, he has a plan now. Like he knows what he's doing. Whereas before it just seemed like, yeah, he was in the batter's box and he was just kind of doing whatever felt right at the time. Um, but, but he's a, he's a different player now. He's a different person now got a whole different demeanor like i said, recommend going back to watching that interview because when i saw that i was like he's different like he's different this year i was like I, I can't wait to see it like over the course of the whole season and he he keeps talking about how like he needs to stay on the field and, and i get that like bucko mike with his whole fragile Hayes thing like yeah <laughs> brian hayes needs to play 150 games like if he wants to be that dude he's got to play 150 games he can't do this 120 130 game stuff like he's got to be on the field a lot um, because the pirates need him. They need him in that lineup every day. Yeah, man. Like this is all reasons to actually like buy in and get excited. The results is what ultimately matters. And again, like we're gonna find out more of this in, in April, I feel. Um, because it is March. He does well in Bradenton, he's doing well again. So you know, it's not as if it's like, well, this time in March, you know, he's actually like carrying over and playing good. He's done this before. And, and I, trust me, I get it. And I'm not here to tell you like it's going to happen. He's going to be an MVP. But what I'm going to tell you is there's a lot of there's a lot of reasons to actually buy in this time going into this year. And I think you're right. I mean, this, this isn't also this isn't also something we've done every year with Cabrera. Like, it's not as if he's done this and it's like, we've, we've hyped him up. We've always had these concerns. Like you said, this is the most excited you've ever been for Cabrera. And I'm with you. You know, we've been pretty much calling like, Hey, if he can just be like the bat, there's more to desire. There's definitely talent there. He hits the ball very, very hard. Right. But like typically into the ground. I mean, I've kept talking about like Eric Cosmer with him all the time. Like the comps in that sense is just, he hits the ball very hard, but into the dirt, he could be better, but just isn't, you know, in that aspect. Um, but I don't, I feel like he wants it and I feel like he, like we're not settling for an average bat here. Like he has that potential to be a much better and above average bat. And if, and like you said, if he can, we've already seen the defense, you already see the difference and he's already gotten to that point where it's being recognized. He's got to go glove this year. Yep. And we raved on NS9 live watching him play defense just in, in batting practice and his drills. And it's just like. This guy's so good. He's just so good defensively. Just so good defensively. And Jim, if he can have that plus bat 
we know he's a five war f- like walking floor. If he has a plus bat, he's a five war player year in and year out because of that defense. Yep. Huge yeah. for the Pirates. He's a, he's a, he's a perennial all-star if he can hit a little bit. Um and and like I said going back to the second half of last year, 539 slugging percentage. Second half of last year for Cabrian Hayes, he had an OPS of 874. 874. Like if that's if that's and I'm not saying like that's who he is like but if if that's who he is if Cabrian Hayes is an 874 OPS hitter he's a, he's he's literally like in MVP talks yes yes so that's like five WAR offensively he's like an eight WAR player right then in there with yeah. those numbers so <laughs> like a seven just, eight WAR like I said it, it's hard to take stuff from spring training but he's just doing every single thing you want to see him do both on the field and off the field. Like he's, we talk about he's question marks right now. Yep. Right. And you talk about question marks and quite like Cabrian Hayes was a huge question mark. Like which version of Cabrian Hayes is he? Um, I'm not saying anything's answered. Right. But again, these are a lot of reasons that you can start looking on the other side of the question mark and saying, you know what? I, I'm kind of believing this. Want to see more of it? But I'm kind of believing this. Yeah, like the the, the all, with all the questions that this pitching staff has, sitting right here on March fourth, I'm pretty confident that this team's got a pretty good core of position players. You know, you you, I mean, it all starts with Reynolds and Hayes, right? Like those are your two, those are your two centerpieces. But you look at Cruz. Who's looked? Who's who's done everything you want to see him do? Um, I mean, you'd like to see him maybe hit a few bombs, but he's he's he has a good approach to the play. You know, the bombs are going to come. Um, there's too much power. Uh, you know, you saw what Swinsky did last year, inconsistent, but like there's obviously some pop there. Um, and if Hayes, like I said, if Hayes and Davis too, Davis looking really good so far this spring. Ooh, yeah. If those two can hit, like this this lineup doesn't look bad all of a sudden. Like it looks like it, it can it can do some damage. Um, like I said, the pitching is going to be the main problem with this team, and we've we've kind of been talking about that for a long time. Um, but I, I'm feeling more and more confident every day that this team's core of position players is pretty solid. Like they've got a good four to five guys that are in that lineup every day who you can count on. Yep. It's tough. This is tough. It's one week of spring training, and trust me, like we get that. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. <laughs> over, I'm trying not to the ones like pump the brakes, yeah. guys. Like, I'm trying not to overreact because um, the pitching still huge, huge question mark. But I, I, I right. do. I feel. I feel a lot more confident in the position players. Yeah. Um, just to kind of you know branch off a little bit on that aspect, but but you're right. And again, like knowing that it's just a a, a week. It's good that in that week, Cabrian is doing that. It's good that in this week that Henry Davis looks very comfortable too. He, he looks, looks like very he good. Looks like, and that's catch. the thing. Yeah, I'm not here to tell you he's a good catcher. I'm not here to tell you that he's looked fantastic. But what I am going to tell you is I haven't noticed that he's a bad catcher. And that's all you need as long as he's going to do this stuff that he's doing right now offensively. Uh, and again, with it just being. The first week, it's been off of major league pitchers too. Like those two home runs he's hit, Corbin Burns and yesterday, like those uh, those are major league starters. It's not as if he's doing it on like the guy that's going to be pitching in Double A this year. Um, so so encouraging stuff from Henry Davis so far. Encouraging stuff from Cabrian Hayes, and you know the rest. I mean, you're not worried about Brian Reynolds, who's also looked good. O'Neill Cruz coming back, still question marks like who's he going to be. He looks like where he left off last year, which is also encouraging. You know, he's he's matured and developed as a hitter last year. That's what we're talking about in spring. Not striking out as much, walking more, making better contact. And that's what he's doing again this year. So I know it's just a week, but that's what you wanted to see out of O'Neill Cruz, which makes you more positive that, okay, what you're hoping to see last year, you probably can see this year. Um, Jack Swinsky is struggling <laughs> a lot. <laughs> That's what we saw last year, too. It's just going to come. I mean, we'll find out, but there's still talent there. Yeah, like I, I like I like the potential of the lineup. And so far, we're seeing the spring is 
reasons why to like the potential of this lineup. Yeah, no, so we haven't even seen Andrew McCutcheon, who you know he's just going to be – he's going to at least give you really good at-bats every single time. He's going to get on base. Um, you add him in there too, and that's just – this, this lineup's got length to it. It's got more length to it as it has in years past. Before, once you got to like that number five hitter, it was like five through nine kind of sucked. And I don't, I don't know if we'll see that this year. We might get to the point where like seven through nine kind of suck, but I think we'll have a little bit more length to the lineup than we've had in years past. I agree. I think this lineup has the ability to be, and I'm not talking potential. Like I think this definitely has the ability to be interesting and and fun to a degree. Because even when you get down to seven through nine, at least for this year, maybe outside of Rowdy. They're interesting. They're interesting parts, you yeah. know. Like, like if it's Pagaro or, or Nick, like whoever, you know. Like, those are players you want to say. It's not like the Austin Hedges of the world, right? I guess that again, that's maybe where where Rowdy is, but he's 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 still not even Austin Hedges. Um, but I guess yeah, like that's what I'm alluding to. This is even if it's not as desirable towards the end of the lineup, it's guys that you want to see, and hopefully as well. Like if they're not then someone else is coming because there's there's depth again we can discuss we can discuss the quality of the depth but there's there's depth so if Aguero is struggling then it's maybe it's Nick Gonzalez coming up and, and finding out right or it, it is maybe it's it is Triolo that's there and he isn't struggling you know so like there's a lot of players to move in and out so again that's why I find it interesting about this lineup too is even if it's not good uh towards the end their struggles those guys are gonna come up and you're gonna find out who they are next yeah so uh, there's um, it, it's one of those things where like I was pretty pessimistic this whole offseason just because I feel like they haven't they didn't do enough. But you know what? Baseball's here. The games are starting. Offseason's pretty much over. Could they still add somebody? Yeah, but I don't think they are. Like I think they're going to roll with what they got. So now it's like, all right, let's focus on these guys and let's see what we can do. I'm excited. I'm still not willing to say this is like a playoff contending team yet because of the, mostly because of the pitching staff right um but yeah I, there's there there are reasons to be excited to watch the pittsburgh pirates this year yeah for sure for sure i think that sums it up I, i'm not a believer in this team like being a playoff team or such either but we've seen the past years i mean this will certainly be more interesting again i'll put it that way because i mean they did actually win some games last year um but i think there's a lot like with that record of not being terrible we keep hearing how many games they improved by and such you know with that there was certainly some some bad yeah, months there April. like they just came out of the gate super hot yeah may, but, but may again through, like may through september they were bad mm -hmm. August, August they were so bad. They were yeah, okay. but, but you're right. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. <clears throat> there was really bad baseball in between, yeah. and I don't think we'll have that as much this year. It just will be more evened out, right? You're not going to have the hot April likely, but either way, what Maybe I'm getting at is team is definitely more interesting. Um, yeah, a lot comes on the pitching, and I guess just to touch on this real quick too, Martin Perez made his debut yesterday, and he's going to be a big part of that, right? He was signed. He's probably like their number two pitcher after Mitch Keller. Um, he looked good. He looked good, Jim. Yeah, the biggest thing that stood out to me yesterday with Perez was uh, the command. Like he seemed like he was he was hitting his spots. Uh, he definitely benefited from Laz Diaz was behind the plate, and Diaz was in midseason form with his like eight foot wide strike zone. I mean Perez sure. was getting Perez was getting like three inches on that outside corner, I feel like. But to his credit, like he was he was like, hey, if, if Diaz is gonna give me these these pitches as strikes, like I'm gonna take advantage of them. And he hit his spots every single time. Um so yeah, really good game for for Perez. Definitely what you want to see. The velocity was down a little bit, but uh his he, he was pinpoint with his command and the change up in particular I was very, very impressed with. Um, if that's a pitch that he can kind of hone in on and get back on track, because I think that was that pitch has always been like his his specialty. And I want to say just in, in that it 
wasn't all that great last year. Um, but that changeup, if he can get back to using that changeup pretty consistently, especially against right-handed hitters and locating it, he has the the potential to to be pretty good. Yeah, last year that changeup was worth negative seven runs. Um, where in the past, you know, it's always been it's it's been inconsistent. It's been a pretty inconsistent. <laughs> thing for him. Um, but if he can go like that sinker cutter changeup, gosh, he's been all over the place. He's been the most inconsistent pitcher. Um, but you, well, you that's why he's a pirate. You see the stuff there, like you see you you can look at him and be like, okay, if he can hit his spots, there could be something here. Like you can you can squint and and, and convince yourself that. 2022 Martin Perez is like somewhere in there. Well, I mean, it's somewhere in there. Absolutely. Mm. It's just, are they going to be able to unlock it and have it there? Like you said, consistently, you know, and, and like this is one thing to stand out to just, just some things. It's that's what's nice about spring training is you kind of get to talk to players, hear stories, right? And like it, you kind of heard from him that he was right into the film room this off season. And it seems like he's like, he's a guy that gets it right. He, he wants to be better and such, but you can also say, well, if he's that person, then that should be done throughout his career, right? So it's not as if like, oh, he's in the film room, he's going to be a better person and better pitcher now, because if that was the case, like you said, he probably wouldn't be so inconsistent. But, you know, it's good hearing that. And again, I don't know how much I believe in the parts effectiveness, changing pitchers and making them better and such that's still to be desired. And, and I think it's still a question mark to find out with, but um, like you said, like, there is stuff there with Perez. It's not as if he's just a bad pitcher. This is a, a very, very low ceiling type of guy. Th- there is some stuff there. If they can unlock it and make this to like a Jose Quintana type of success story. Like, I think there's that type of potential with Martin Perez. Um, it's just that, there's been one Jose Quintana. So I'm not quite sure if I'm ready to stamp that they can do that for him, but yeah. uh, that would, that would be huge. Yeah. I think if um that, that a lot rides on either, like if they're able to get Marco Gonzalez or Martin Perez, just one of them, if one of them can kind of reach their potential and kind of like go back to being the guy who they were when they look good, um, that could mean a whole lot for this team. Like if all of a sudden Marco Gonzalez or Martin Perez becomes a three war pitcher for this team, like that changes a whole, whole lot. Um, now the question is, will that happen? Right? Like we've seen it happen from those guys before, but is it going to happen for the pirates in 2023? I don't know. But if one of those two can like really tap into, to their strengths uh, and, and put together a good season, it could, it could, really really help us team yeah absolutely <laughs> but the, the sad part is that's also just a start there's still so much more it still just gives you two two decent pitchers <laughs> right because what you're asking is hey if the guy they've penciled in to be the number two starter <laughs> yeah, if the number two starter be like a, a effective three. starting pitcher as a floor <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's where we're at. Twenty three, four, five, the death pieces. Yeah, and again, that's that's why we talk about this team that the, the limits are the pitching staff. Yeah. So a lot of question marks, a lot of things need to go right. And um, Martin Perez is definitely one of the top on that list. He was mm-hmm. signed. I guess he was outside of Chapman, right? He's the biggest signing the Pirates had this offseason as far as starting pitching goes. So like a lot are on his shoulders to be yeah. a good pitcher. A lot on the shoulders, I think, of the guy pitching today, too. Yep. Paul Skeens. Well, I was going to say uh, which he's one. Not gonna start, he's not going to start in Pittsburgh, but um, look, if, he, if he's able to show that he's ready, um, you know, you you bring him up midseason at some point, uh, and, and, yeah, he could be a big help as well. So Paul Skeens starting today, his second spring uh, appearance down in Port Charlotte against Tampa. That game is is televised as well, so um, it's going to be on on uh, you know whatever the Rays TV channel is. The Rays are broadcasting that game. That's exciting stuff. Yep, I can't wait. We'll have actual stat cast numbers better than our video to see him <laughs> from the stands. 
I'm excited for Paul Skeens. I, I I said it on Twitter after we had that one Starbucks. Where I said I'm not really. There's not too much that I'm like super excited about or like a single player, and it's officially Paul Skeens. And out, especially seeing that outing, it is absolutely Paul Skeens. So give me all the Paul Skeens you have. Hopefully before June too. There you Probably go. not. So yeah. So tune yeah. in today. Watch Paul Skeens. Yep. That's all I got, though. Unless you have anything else you want to bring up, not really. No, nope. I just wanted to touch a little bit on Martin Perez for sure because yeah. that was a really good solid, solid outing by him that uh, you want to see. So, and yeah, he went Doug. three innings. I want to just credit that too. He also went three innings. That was kind of surprising. His Doug on the post game show, first ever NS nine post game show of twenty twenty four. By the way, yesterday, check it out if you haven't. Um, he he used the word uh, encouraging a lot. It was definitely something to be encouraged about. And if you're if you're at this point of the season, you can't really take a whole lot out of things. You you would just rather be encouraged than discouraged, right? So right, yeah, absolutely. So I'm encouraged, not yep. intrigued yet. <laughs> Let's get out of here then. As always, really appreciate you all for watching. Uh, we'll be back throughout this week, of course, another NS9 Live and such. Um, and I think just to put out there, because post sh- post show games are back in parentheses, uh, our next one is next Saturday. Is that what Sunday. it is? Sunday. Next Sunday, we'll be we'll be back with another post game show. Um, yeah. So I mean, it's spring training for the players. It's spring training for you know the NS9 crew too. We gotta we gotta get ready to go. We got a grueling 162 game post game schedule. That we got to get ready for. So 162 plus. 162 plus. Hopefully. There it is. Um, So next Sunday, we'll have another (laughs) post game show. Um, NS9 TV, if you haven't tuned in, awesome. Just something to put in the background, you know, 10 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. every single day. You can just go to our YouTube page and you can watch pirate stuff for six straight hours if you, uh, if your heart desires. So yeah, all you nuts, nutsos, go and check that out. Six straight hours of us and pirates. I'll say this: it's uh, perfect. It's perfect, like background to your work day type thing. Just put it on. You don't have to pay attention to the whole thing. But hey, you got pirate stuff in the background for six hours. Yep, we try to make it a good mix: some current stuff, some old stuff. Um, that could be relevant today. Obviously, like we're not just gonna have like a post game from 2022 on, but (laughs) right. Yeah, but yeah, so check it out. Pretty cool stuff. Um, yeah, so with that said, I guess we'll get out of here. Let's do it. All right, guys, bye bye. See you all. Hey, you all, thank you for watching. I know we try to provide the most entertaining content that we can, uh, and we'd love to spread it to as many people as possible. So uh, I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but if you could take the five seconds to like this video and subscribe to the page, it helps out so much more than you know. Thank you and let's go Bucks.